Mangus over on the left to Candio on the right. But he is the overall one seed, so Mangus will be on the play. Has to get through Brennan. Now, one of the cards that we're looking at on Brennan's side is going to be Death's Shadow itself. It's one of the few things that can outsize the Eldrazi. Yep, you want to get that one online really quickly. And we start out a pass, a waste and a pass. James is on a six card hand. Look at Brennan, that's got to feel pretty good that there was no Tron piece there. Yeah, it, it's just waste too. It's not even Eldrazi Temple. Cavern of Souls. There's no, this is... no expedition map. Great. There is a Cavern of Souls in James's hand. So that can come up. But actually, Brennan's deck was light on counter magic. You can't stubborn denial uh, Eldrazi creatures anyway. So Cavern of Souls is not coming to play here as much as it does in other matchups. In fact, in the main deck, you're not going to be able to yeah. counter creatures. Brennan, fetch, shock, cycle, cycle. All right, down to 13. Cycle, 11. Okay, how far can he go on this? He, I think he has a Thought Seize also. If he has a Shadow, he just wants to play it. So there's the whole set. Cycle, Street Wraith, down to 9. I suppose if you have a Thought Seize, there's an argument for leading on that, even if you <laughs> have the Shadow. Thought to seven. And Chalice of the Void, Dismember, Walking Ballista. Look, you're almost, you're out of Dismember range already. Exactly. That, that's what's nice about the Thought Seize here. And you can just <laughs> take the Chalice of the Void yeah. and you're kind of golden. If your opponent, if you're going to cycle all the Street Wraiths, is it just a guarantee there's a Death Shadow in your hand? Or would you do it anyway? I think you just have to. You're not casting it. That's what your it. deck does? Yeah. Okay. But uh, the, the Walking Ballista in James's hand, that <laughs> one <laughs> yeah. is troubling from seven. Okay, it's a 1-1. One, one. Let's go back to Brennan. He's at seven. He's got a fetch land in hand. At, oh, there he goes. Draws Death's Shadow. Ooh, that is a good one. That's that's a nice draw from this board. <laughs> I think he has a dismember in hand. No, okay, th there's like a limit, don't Ryan. Okay. I think we want to use can't. that one just yet. You, that you would go to just two. Take five. <laughs> Just dead to any other walking ballista. <laughs> he has a full seven cards left. Those cards, the graveyard. I mean, he he has a full a bu bunch of fuel for a delve threat. <laughs> Friend is just sitting here thinking, do I feel good about my decisions? I sure got rid of my life points. <laughs> I did the thing my deck's trying to do. Was it worth it? I have never 13 to myself on the first turn of the game. So yeah, this is like a record. Can you? This is this is the maximum, isn't it? That's the most damage it can deal itself on the first turn. Yes, it it's is. It's the literal maximum. When Gataxian Probe was legal, you could do it a little more. You but, could kill uh, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was possible. Right. You did 21 yourself. Here's Death Shadow. Yeah, seven seven for one. Nice passes. Leaves up that dismember. Ooh. And I like that he didn't cast the dismember because James has drawn a second, a second walking ballista. ballista. He just kill him. And here it is. Okay. I don't know about that dismember anymore. All right. That one's going to be spent. There's going to be some black mana invested in this dismember. Brennan will thought scar himself. Yeah, thought seize. I don't want to cast that anymore. Yep. Drawing tarn. No, thank you. Coligan's command. Okay, Ooh. that might play. Except they has to fetch shock to make red. And yeah. now I'm, I'm off it again. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little pretty scary. But uh, you do put yourself in a spot where two hits from the shadow are lethal. Yeah, if, I mean, it's a seven. If you have fetch shock here, you're actually only fading exactly walking ballista, if I'm not mistaken. I guess Eldrazi put Temple it, Reality wait, wait, wait. Smasher. Fourth land, fourth land. Just put a counter on him. You, you just call against command, kill both walking ballistas. Oh, okay, we kill both. Yeah. Fetch shock. Yeah, all right. He has well, he, steam he, vents. He has that option. He could shock. He doesn't have, can't fetch shock. I want to do it. He's just going to swing. Ah, That's so tame. Boo. James down to 13. Brennan DeCandio, you lack courage. He doesn't have a third one. What are the chances? Tap steam vents. Boo. Passes. James draws Endbringer. That one costs twice as much mana. Yeah, he has, th he has Dismember, Endbringer, Thought Not Seer. Nothing he can cast. Nothing he can do. I guess, I mean, you can cast the Dismember, but that that's... That's bad. Yeah, that's just going to break even on life. Yeah, James doesn't have a play here. I guess you gain one life. I apologize. He can swing both ballistas. He pro he's going to have to decide if he thinks he's going to take 13. Yeah, Brennan, I suppose uh, the play here, he's paying mind to Reality Smasher, as if he tapped yeah. out for Culligan's command and there was a Eldrazi, Temp Eldrazi Temple Reality Smasher that would just be lethal. And how would that, he'd be able to stop from that now? Or would well, that still kill him? He has Dismember up now. Okay. Swing with both Ballistas. Snapcaster Mage flashed into play. 
Actually, he'd, he'd still just be dead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think he's still just dead. Snapcaster blocks Walking Ballista. Yeah, I guess that's okay, fine. Okay, that's what's going to happen. Brennan down to five. Shadow moves up to an 8-8. Eight eight. That's fine. This is a really weird game. No I think it favors Brennan, but it's this is a weird one. Well, he has a fetch land. No, he can't. Oh, Brennan has a fourth land. James no, has no, no fourth land. No, Brennan can fetch down to two, and then Coligan's command his opponent to kill him. Okay, he's going to put eight. He's going to put James down to five. Where's, where's the courage here, Ryan? And that's what I'm saying, man. Eldrazi Temple, James, thought not serious. Now, if it was Smasher, Brennan had made a mistake. Thought not, though. He's Brennan, I believe, has I believe he has two Colgan's commands. Still has Dismember, right? You can't. Oh, you can just pay the full mana for it? Yeah, look at his two black lands and the steam vents. Easy. Yeah. With Thought Not on the stack. We'll see if he makes that line. Yeah, pays black mana, dismembers Thought Not. So Brennan will draw and then lose a card, but that should be just fine. Shadow, Colgan's Command, Colgan's Command, Opt. Look at all these cards that are lethal. Would you like to go to game two? You can't take both the Colgan's Commands, and it's going to kill you. Takes the Death Shadow. Remove your blocker. Makes you discard a card? I don't know, whatever. Shatter. Destroy an artifact. Make you discard. Get back the Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, that's sure. nice too. And swings in. And there we go. Game one. Sure. Dealing 13 to yourself on the first turn. A plus. Brennan DeCandio takes the first one. Yep. And it was just Death Shadow. That That's the most important card here. It's the namesake well, of the deck. Well, when you got all... When you have that much <laughs> Street Wraith, Death Shadow's a really good card. I agree. It was very smart for Brennan to choose to draw those cards. So... Brennan breaks serve here on the draw. He takes the first game. We're going to have some sideboarded games. James won both sideboarded games to take the semifinals. We'll see if he can do it again when we break down the sideboards in just one minute. It's back here in game number two. Brennan DeCandio and James Mangus. So on Brennan, we'll start on James' side. He did lose the first game. Three war Ratchet Bombs and three Warping Whales for some removal. Two Hangerbacks, two Grafticker's Cage, two Relics, two Sorcerer's Spyglass, and a, blast and a Basilisk Collar. I mean, Ratchet Bomb seems good if the that's going to happen. Yes. But uh, so again, the Death Shadow, the most important card yeah. for Brennan. Ratchet Bomb, pretty clean answer to that. So you like that one a good amount. Hangerback Walker can buy you a lot of time. That card is pretty reasonable to have access to here. You have a lot of stuff that hits graveyards. Scrapdigger's Cage only interacts with Snapcaster Mage. Don't like it for that reason. The Relic of Progenitus is pretty good in the matchup. Mm -hmm. And I actually am pretty into Basilisk Caller, just the lifelink that can be pretty meaningful. Also, if you're able to set up an Endbringer, you can start machine gunning down the large creatures. So is the idea that the Basilisk Caller is one of the things that can get you past Death Shadow? It, you can uh, just kill it with your Walking Ballista and your yeah. Endbringers. Yeah, that's kind of the idea of it. Now, on Brennan's side, he has these Ceremonious Rejections. We saw him use them against teammate Jim Davis's Tron deck. I'm a little more skeptical of them against someone who plays so much Cavern of Souls. Yeah, Cavern of Souls is a problem. There are two copies that can be mapped for. Your Disdainful Stroke is good-ish in the matchup. The card that's excellent in the sideboard that usually is going to be pretty meaningful is Liliana of the Veil. Yes. Um, it does not line up against Mattery Shaper. It does not line up against these sideboard hangerback walkers, but okay. it does line up pretty well against most of the creatures in the deck. So going back to those counter spells then, I guess, the Rejections and the Disdainful Stroke, does Brennan even use them against this deck? I don't think you can just leave Rejection on the sideboard. Okay. If there, I guess if there is a Cavern of Souls, there still are some cards that can be countered. Yeah, you still want to counter Chalice of the Void. That's a big one. And there's yeah. a couple All is Dust as well. And Brennan will be on the draw again. So there was a turn two chalice, I guess, in James's hand last game. Right. Brennan just shut it down after the thought cease. And it looks like James again will be going to six here. Good news for Brennan. He needs to break again, winning on the draw. But he, this one will be the harder of the two games for Brennan. I imagine that this hand probably isn't as good as his game one hand because his game one hand was insane and it might be, have been the best hand I've ever seen. I mean, it, it, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's the most damage. <laughs> You're like, that was a good hand. <laughs> yeah, 
And James will keep on six. All right. So keep on six here. Scry to the bottom for James, and this should get us going. Hopefully something better than basic wastes on turn one. Yeah, I mean, he just was never threatening anything above curve. Mm -hmm. Eldrazi Temple into Perelica Progenitus. Uh, that already threatens just with Eldrazi Temple itself. Yeah, much better start. Brandon side, got Stubborn Denial. Looks like in hand and Thought Seize. So Fetch, Shock, Thought Seize down to 15. He'll see what he's up against. Walking Ballista, Mind Stone, one Tron piece. It's Urza's Mine and Cavern of Souls. Just Threat Light. Mm -hmm. The hand like this. I think the Mind Stone is slightly better. Than the Ballista? Yeah. The Ballista is not going to get big anytime soon. Yeah, there's no, the, the mana's all fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Mind Stone being a redraw is arguably just better than the Ballista. Yeah, James' hand does not do much. I like where Brennan's at. He has another Thought Seize, to be fair, which is actually, could be a dead card. Yeah. You probably just kind of have to cast it next turn. Yeah, he'll take Mind Stone. Leaves Ballista, Cavern, Tron Piece. James War starts to work away with the Relic. Draws Reality Smasher. Gets Brennan's other card. And that, that'll that play. Brennan will get to Thought Seize the Reality Smasher. Interestingly, James did not make Ballista on one that turn. Yeah, he's waiting. He's kind of hoping to make it a little bit bigger. He just wants to crack that Relic. Mm, you also kind of want to check out the texture of the game. See if you actually want to just hang back. Maybe Brendan has trouble dealing no. damage to himself, but that is not the case. No, Brendan down to 13 off Thought Season. That ha that Reality Smasher that James drawn is almost certainly going to go away here. Yeah, that one's definitely just better than the Ballista. So Brendan has done a great job of controlling the early game. Certainly is ahead, but does he have a threat? We're going to have to see now. If one of his threats is a Gurmag Angler, then this Royal Cabogenesis has actually kept him off the board. He does have a Thought Scour in hand. You can build up a graveyard really quickly and at least force the activation with that. And this is what can happen. Eldrazi Tron is going to top deck that Thought Knot Seer. And with the Temple, he gets it a turn early. James actually still puts together a good opening. And off Cavern of Souls, this Ceremonious Rejection into Candio's hand not looking very good. Yeah. Hard Brennan, to interact with. Brennan thinking about Thought Scouring in response for whatever that's worth. Yeah, I guess the question is if he thinks that's what's going to get taken. He's going to go ahead and do that fetch. We'll see if it's fetch with shock or without. It looks like fetch shock to 10, Thought Scour himself. You do want to set up so that if you draw Death Shadow, it'll be as large or larger than the Thought Knot Seer. Not quite there just yet. Mills over Pluted Delta and Opt. Hand, Gurmag Angler, Street Wraith, Ceremonies Rejection, Stubborn Denial. So yeah, that Relic of Progenesis is doing some good work. Because James has it tapped and his lands tapped, I think what Brennan's trying to do here is actually just get that Angler online the very next turn yeah, before actually, Relic can work. What I was actually going to say is that the Relic's being a little bit embarrassed here, and you might have yeah. to take the Delve Threat with the Thought Knots here. I agree. There are worse things, but you're right. You can't give him that 5-5, five five, especially when your whole plan's built on a 4-4, four four, and that's what, Jam what James is going to have to do. Yeah, Brennan would like to find another Delve Threat, or at least a Death Shadow on this turn. He has to redraw with the Street Wraith, but... Yeah, just finds another Fetch Land, so right now he has nothing going on. These reactive cards are just being blanked. Mm -hmm. Brennan down to 8, draws, finds another land that's not going to play. That's gross. Plays land and passes, and he's brought himself all the way down to eight, which means this is actually two turns away from being over. Yep. Also, that walking ballista makes things a little bit harder as well. All right, Brennan down to four on the hit. That one is counterable, though, and James knows it. Probably don't cast that. Yeah, not into Ceremonious, not when he knows he has it. Mm -hmm. Can use Relic to take part of Brennan's graveyard. He, and then he's going to go ahead and sacrifice it just to clear the rest of it away. He doesn't want a top decked Delve threat to work against him. Yep. And a second drawn piece. Power plant to go with mine. We go back to Decandio. Right now, he has no way to survive through the turn. He's going to have to draw something. Yep. Needs an answer. Would like a Death Shadow. So it looks like thinning out the draw a bit here. 
And he's doing that during main phase as opposed to end step in case he top decks Fatal Push. Is this not Perhaps. end step? Are we on end step? I, I, maybe I maybe have on not step. seen right. a card draw yet. I just question whether we're, we're... Okay, we're on James' end step. Just wondering whether it was upkeep. Coligan's command of the pickup. Well, the graveyard's empty. Yeah, Thought not Sierra has four toughness, not two. It's not an artifact. Yeah, I don't think he can do it. It looks like he's out. Goes over, plays land, passes to James. James draws Tron for what it's worth <laughs> here, so that's a fine play, but doesn't need it. The swing is going to force game three. And James, despite a really underwhelming six, which Brennan picked apart, one of the strengths to these Tron decks is just how well they can play off the top, and James does just that. Cavern of Souls really did a lot of work in that game, making that Thought Not Seer uncounterable. That uh, nothing Brennan could do about that. Didn't have any kind of removal spell, was never able to send a little threat. Brendan was able to overpower the Relic of Regenitus, get a big graveyard to cast Gurmag Angler, but the Thought Not Seer ripped that out and really couldn't do anything from there. We saw just losing with Ceremonious Rejection and Stubborn Denial in hand. But game three, Brendan will be on the play. If he can have a hand similar to his game one hand, you can definitely see him running away with this one. The player's going to consult sideboards again. All right, so it's going to come down to one last game here. It's going to be for the trophy. Now, while they cyber, we're going to take a second to tell you about the very next stop we have on the SCG Tour. So that's SCG Worcester. It's going to be coming up here in a two weeks. Go ahead and make it out, and you can you too can find yourself in the feature match area. Playing some Legacy. Yeah, the one, the Legacy Open, every each season, that one is a one of our more popular events, especially in the New England area. The Deathrite Shaman format. Is that fair now? I just thought, is that, it's not the Brainstorm format, it's the Deathrite Shaman format? <laughs> it's disingenuous to call it the Deathrite Shaman format, but that is what I'm going to call it. All right. I think it's the Fetchland format. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's what it is. No one plays fetch lands in modern, see? So modern's not the fetch so land for So modern plays I'm just fetch gonna, lands? I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna, for the record, no matter what you answer here, I'm just gonna shoot it down, but go oh, for it. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, that's a good broadcast. I like it when we disagree <laughs> with each other meaninglessly and don't okay. advance the conversation. But no, but tell me about how this is, modern is not the fetch land format. Well, you see, Serum Visions forces you to fetch before you cast your cantrip. And then okay. you're kind of stuck with some nonsense and you have to draw the card. Right. But Brainstorm right. lets you fetch after you cast your cantrip, and it's very good. Might as well not fetch at all in Modern, then. Exactly. I mean, I, that's why I play a deck with 29 lands sometimes that has no fetch lands in yeah, it. Yeah, Eldrazi Tron, there's no fetch no lands fetch in that lands deck. No fetch lands there. Brennan's only playing fetches because he deal damage to him. Yeah, that's a, that's a benefit. Yeah. Brennan going to be on the play here. Decides he's going to keep with this. And James has not kept a seven yet. Not going to start. He goes down to six on the draw. Yeah, he was able to win one on a six. Yeah, yeah and a lot of that's going to put pressure on the top of his deck then. He can draw a Cavern of Souls. Sure. That, that certainly plays. And that definitely did play. You looked at Brennan that, time, that hand. He was up cards. Stubborn Denial and Ceremonious Rejection both just blanked. That's just the frustrating thing about this matchup is you need to draw the exact right cards. It's kind of the old magic adage, there's no bad threats, only bad answers. Everything just has to line up really well, and the Eldrazi Tron deck, as long as it's presenting threats, are going to be pretty good. Yeah, and it was just a 4-4 that ended up taking it down, the Thought Knots here. Now, to be fair, Brennan did more work on his life total than James did. I think James dealt... Seven and Brennan dealt thirteen. <laughs> yeah, but Brennan didn't even more damage to himself in game one. That was fine. Keep on six. It looks like for James, he has a Chalice of the Void in his hand. That's not as good on the draw. No. A lot of times you see Brennan actually leave the card there. It's also not as good post board. Yeah. Scry to the bottom, and this one is going to be it. Yeah, he's not sure. Goes with it. And here we go, game three, Brennan starts off just to fetch land, no damage, and much like game one, it is wastes for James. Gross. Yeah, Seagate Wreckage is another land. That one's gonna yeah. take a while before he's activating. Brennan does have Thought Season hand, so he is protected against that Chalice of the Void. I'm 
Might be looking at Brendan on another one lander. Well, if he has a one lander and he opts for the land and misses, and then misses on the draw step, and he could get locked out by Chalice. Mm -hmm. There's risk here, down to 17. This is that opt. Ceremonies rejection, does he want it? If he's thinking about it, I'm guessing he has another land. Ah, might be buried in the back of the hand here. Yeah. You know, I don't think he'd you don't think he'd be contemplating keeping a one lander. <laughs> no. Yeah, he'll take ceremonious rejection. Okay, yep, there there is a watery grave. So he will shock for watery grave. And pass the turn. Rejection's quite good against Chalice of the Void, no matter yeah. what happens. Yeah, it covers it. And here we see Chalice of the Void Prince says yes. Yes, it's countered. No, thank you. You absolutely cannot cast that. Looks like another Ceremonious in Brendan's hand. He does have a fetch land and I think at least one Death Shadow, so he can be online this turn. Yeah, the fetch land will bring him down to 12, meaning Death Shadow will be a 1-1. One, one. Sometimes you do want to try to outpace Dismember with your Shadows. You certainly want to be able to outpace Walking Ballista. You don't want to just be at 12 and cast Shadow. But you also just have to get something on the table. You don't want to give James the opportunity to start making a lot of mana and run away with the game. Goes down to 12, down to 10, cycling Street Wraith for Brennan. Draws Thought sees This is going to be a big shadow. Yeah, this is just getting better with every yeah, game action. Yeah, down to 8. Ballista, Dismember, Smasher, Smasher, Seagate Wreckage. This is not a good hand for James. Brennan, Brennan should be able to beat this. Yes. Now, yeah. even with a top deck temple, he's still two turns off of making any smashers. Yeah, now, he's, is it exactly eight, meaning his shadow's actually not safe yet from Dismember? That might be enough to get him to take the Dismember. Mm -hmm. the, he has a Ceremonious Rejection for the Hangerback Walker. Without two discard spells, you can't really look at taking a Reality Smasher. Yeah, so he'll take the Dismember and then make Death's Shadow. It's a 5-5. Five -five passes. James hoping to get an Eldrazi Temple. Draws an Endbringer. That's not even close. Nope. Casts Hangerback Walker on one. That will buy him some time. And I'll be interested to see James might actually take a hit off Hangerback, but Brennan counters. Ceremonious Rejection, yeah. nothing. When that die moved, I was a little confused. You're but like, no, I, no. I that's think that's a happening. good one to counter. So here's a swing for five. James down to 15. Brennan looks like he has a follow-up. I think Tassiger joined. Mm -hmm. And James is nowhere near casting all his dust, so a second threat's very good here. Here is the Golden Fang. Del delving away goes Brennan. Yeah, he can uh, leave a couple things in the graveyard, and looks like just leaving both rejections. Not really going to need an opt. He wouldn't snap cast that. You just kind of want to have access to those. James will make his fourth land, that Seagate Wreckage, but can't cast any of the spells in his hand. Is about to take at least nine damage. Here's a swing, James, down to six. And now even drawing the land for Reality Smasher shouldn't do it. Thought not Sears the draw. James will cast it. He'll take a look. But Dismember in response does Brennan. That's going to remove it. It's going to seal it. And then he extends the hand. Brennan DeCandio takes game three. He is your Indianapolis champion.